When you think of theme parks, you normally imagine laughter and fun times. But once they're closed and abandoned, now that's a whole different story. Let's take a look at some of them. You decide to take a trip to New Orleans to visit Six Flags. When you arrive there, you discover the theme park is deserted. The sign that says closed for storm is still standing. You're feeling adventurous, so you let yourself pass the crackling gates. Is it chilly in here, or is it just me? Hmm. You walk past a swimming pool, and it looks like there's someone in there. You get closer, and oh no, it's an alligator! Better run and leave that thing alone. You keep exploring the sign. The park took inspiration from the city's French architecture, but today the buildings are dirty, the windows are all shattered, and there are unusual items everywhere. Say, what is this vintage rollerblade doing here? The park closed during the hurricane, and it was left standing under 7 feet of water. No wonder the metal rides are all rusty now. This carousel doesn't look too inviting to me. We'll have to come back mm, another time. Hey, at least you got some cool-looking pictures, right? Let's make this next one even more exciting. Imagine you plan to visit Data Park at night. Somewhere in the countryside of Belgium, you'll find a creepy theme park derelict from many years ago. You have nothing with you but the floodlight on your phone. You see the entrance of a bridge and start to make your way across. The bridge sways and creaks. Just FYI, you are crossing one of the longest hanging bridges in Europe. You made it through. Whew. The surrounding woods are terrifying, and several deserted attractions start popping up along the way. The forest has taken this twirling swing set. This huge slide would probably break if you tried to use it now. The park is in terrible condition. No wonder they closed it down due to security reasons. Best to leave it now and come back in the daylight. Your next stop is Wonderland Eurasia, also known as Anka Park in Turkey. The theme park opened in March 2019, but closed shortly after. Once inside the gigantic complex, you stumble upon what looks like an empty warehouse, but ends up being an indoor roller coaster. Everything was left intact and is as good as new. You even take a quick sit on one of the roller coaster carts, perfectly lined up for the next ride. If you're feeling really adventurous, you can walk on the rails of the indoor coaster. Just be careful not to fall down. Oh, over there are the Flintstones. It's almost like a childhood deja vu here in the youngsters section of the park. On the horizon, you see what looks like the Jurassic World and decide to check it out. There are neglected statues of huge T-Rexes and fake skeletons of dinosaurs lying across the floor. Unlike the other derelict parks, everything here is new, which makes it all the more strange. Nara Dreamland was meant to be Japan's Disney World, but the project failed over time. Today, it's inhabited by moist ivies and strange birds. To get in, you'll pass a drawbridge and head into a pastel-colored castle. Your heart might be faster than usual when you pass a fog-covered roller coaster. Was that meant to be the Matterhorn? Yup. Everything about this place says you shouldn't be there. Tossed on the park's floor, you'll see reels of tickets and misconfigured stuffed animals. How about walking into an empty diner? It's bizarre how the tables and stools are still in place. Strolling through what was once a gift shop, you'll see empty shelves and an old-school cash machine. I'd say you better leave before anything comes out of here. Now, if I say Joyland, what do you imagine? The name says it all, right? But if you decide to visit Joyland today, I bet you'll have a very chilling time. Down in Wichita, Kansas, you'll find a once famous but now empty theme park filled with eerie sights. A pale blue slide in the middle of a forest? Check. Empty warehouses straight out of a horror movie? Check. A wacky shack that looks truly wacky? <laughs> you bet. But if you visit it on a good sunny day, I'd say the park is weird but still has some beauty. Joyland was built in the late 1940s. It carries a vintage aura that goes well with the neglected atmosphere. Hey, look at this rusty yellow Ferris wheel with a stripped ticket box in front. I dare say it's almost charming.
The Magic Harbor Amusement Park is not that magical after all. Just outside of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, you'll find an old theme park left to nature. Here, bumper cars are not bumping anymore. If you get into a hedge maze, you'll probably never find your way out of it. I'm not sure what you'll see running around amongst the rusty rides, so good luck if you're planning a visit. If you're looking for somewhere to cool down on a hot and sunny afternoon, how about Disney's River Country? Just kidding. You're definitely not going to want to get in the water there. The park was built in the 1970s and closed in 2001. Pay a visit to the Whitewater Rapids on foot instead of floating down the fake river. You'll have about 330 feet to stroll along a very bumpy pathway. Maybe you'll see hanging tires that served as swing sets out in the bay. You can even try zip lining if you trust the cable. To add a little more creepy to this story, the park was closed down due to a dangerous bacteria that thrived in warm bodies of water. Are you sure you don't fancy a swim? When you think Italy, I bet you think pasta and pizza, and a leaning tower somewhere. Well, in the south of Italy sits the empty Miragica Amusement Park. The entrance still says welcome, but people stopped coming a few years ago. The site is covered in grass everywhere. The toy-like architecture is still there. Beneath the forgotten rails of an open-air roller coaster, you can almost hear the screams of excitement of people on the ride. This part of the park is usually prohibited, but there's no one around to control that now. It might be scary to be here, but adrenaline sure is running high. This next theme park is vacant only during a certain time of the year, but it still gives the true heebie-jeebie vibes. You have to catch a train from the city and travel to the end of the line till you reach the park. Coney Island is a seasonal park, open only from the middle of spring to the middle of fall. If you want to catch its unnerving vibe, you have to visit in winter. Then, you'd walk through the rows of empty stalls with the fairy string lights still hanging above your head. It looks frozen in time as all the rides lay shut down. Speaking of which, sometimes it gets frozen for real. Under many inches of snow, Coney Island is a little less disturbing. Then again, snow does have that effect on landscapes. But the park is empty and deserted nonetheless. I bet it's a great photo op. Now, be sure to tell me in the comments which abandoned amusement park you found the creepiest. Hey, you know me, I won't be checking any of these out. I'll let you go first. Shh, do you hear something? Eh, it's nothing, just water dripping. You're walking alone down a dark corridor with nothing but your phone lighting your way. You see a large figure at the end of the hallway. You can't make out what it is, but it's a large figure with broad shoulders and a lab coat. You pause and have nowhere to go but forward towards the figure or back to the staircase. Suddenly, the figure starts sprinting towards you. You freeze in your spot. Four hours earlier. You and your two friends decided to sneak into an abandoned chemical plant to film some cool videos for social media. You were against the idea because it's creepy, but your friends insist that it will get many views and go viral. So you grab your bikes, flashlights, and some self-defensive gear and make your way there. It's nightfall, so you hook up your bike's flashlights and pedal off. After a couple of miles, you divert onto an off-road path through a thick forest until you reach a large steel fence encircling the plant. You and your friends have been here before, but you never went past the fence. Despite all the warning signs, you get out your pliers and start cutting the fence. The legend is that this plant was abandoned decades ago after operating at full capacity. Then, one day, an accident occurred, leading to a massive evacuation from the plant and the city around it. Ever since then, the plant was emptied. No health hazards are going on, but people who live in the town nearby have reported seeing things. Figures were moving in the shadows. Random lights flicker in the plant, even though no one is there. There have been reports of loud screams in the middle of the night. After hearing these stories, the hair on the back of your neck stands up and you shudder with fear. 
Your friends, on the other hand, are giddy and excited. After cutting through the fence, you leave your bikes and make your way to the plant. You pass the parking lot with some cars parked in their designated place. Other cars look like they were abandoned, with the doors still open. You reach the entrance of the plant, but it's chained up. Your friends rattle it, but it won't budge. Well, I guess the adventure is over. But your friend takes a rock and smashes it through a window, and you and your friends climb through. You enter the plant, and it's pitch black. The floor is sticky, and the air is dusty. You whip out your flashlights and light up the room. It's covered in black material that's hard to distinguish. Some objects are tossed over, as if people were just trying to make it to the exit. So far, nothing seems that creepy. The plant is huge, so there'll be plenty of time to explore. Your friend gets out her phone and starts filming live on social media. She's narrating the whole trip, and many people are viewing it. They're commenting and sharing their thoughts. Suddenly, you hear a scream coming from deep within the building. You and your friends hug each other in fear and almost run out. But your friend recording what's happening insists you move forward. The path is long and confusing. You find a map of the plant that tells you where to go. You see that you're only in the reception lobby, and there are still plenty of places to go. The flickering lights come from the second floor in a room facing the town, which is not too far from where you're at. You move upstairs in a very slow attempt, but the stairs are unstable. After a few steps up, one of the stairs breaks, and your leg is caught up at the bottom, where you almost fall. Your friends help you up. You reach the second floor and try to find the room with the flickering lights. The only problem is that the lights go off randomly. Or maybe it's not so random. You decide to split up to cover more ground. Good thing you have walkie-talkies to communicate, but it's still creepy. You tiptoe into each room. The displaced objects you see show how the people just packed up and ran away. Each room is creepier than the next. You point your flashlight all over, trying to find some clues to anything that might explain anything. You get some static from your walkie-talkie, and it gets louder and louder. You can't turn it off. Then you hear some voice behind the static crackling noise. It doesn't sound like any of your friends. It says, in a high-pitched shriek. You almost drop your walkie-talkie, and then the lights in the room you're standing in start to flicker. You freak out and run outside to your friends. You bump into many objects and knock them down. Your friends rush to you to see what's happening. You explain everything to them, and they head to the room to see if it all makes sense. But they don't spot anything weird. The lights are not flickering, and the walkie-talkies are silent. Are you just imagining it? Your friend is still filming everything live. There are even more people hopping on the live stream. You don't want to waste any more time, so you and your friends go deeper into the plant. This time it's completely pitch black, since there aren't any windows around. It's creepy. You see some lab coats scattered across the floor, resembling people. There are rooms on each side of the wall with machines and gizmos. Most of the rooms are locked and need a passcode to enter. The only problem is that the power's out. The batteries of your flashlight begin to give out, so you switch to lights on your phones. Your friend is still filming live, but as you go deeper, the signal cuts out. Even walkie-talkies don't work. It's very damp, and the room is echoing with creepy sounds. Each step resonates around the extended hallway, making it sound like someone is stalking you. That's when you hear footsteps coming from one of the rooms. The legend says that there's a creature living here with extended arms, sharp teeth, and glowing red eyes. It wanders around the corridors, scratching the walls with its sharp claws. Some say it's lost and has been trying to find a way out, while others say it's a dog that found its way inside. Your friend records everything on her phone without going live to upload the footage later. Suddenly, you hear something you don't ever want to hear, scratching on the wall. You and your friends look at each other with your eyes popping out and run. You're again knocking over things and making a lot of noise. You reach a dead end. We're at the spot. You see the large figure with broad shoulders and what appears to be a lab coat. 
It starts racing towards you. You try all the doors in the hallway, and finally, one of them opens. You go inside and slam the door shut. The creature starts slamming on the door, trying to get in. You're recording this on your phone. You crawl to a glass window to see what it is, but you only get a glimpse of the creature fleeing. You lost your friends and your way. You want to get out of here. A map of the plant inside the room shows you the way out. You check to see if it's clear, and you head out. You take a picture of the map to see where to go, but you're going around in circles. You hear your friends outside and rush to them. They were trying to call you, but lost you when they scattered. You leave the plant, get on your bikes, and head back home. As you reach the main road outside the forest, you turn around to see if anything weird is happening at the plant. You see the lights flicker in the same room you were in. You shudder and go home. Don't worry, none of it was real. The lights flickering were just the battery-powered lamps randomly going off. And the creature that was supposedly chasing you was your friends pulling a prank on you. There's no creature there. And the other sounds you heard are some stray animals scared of all the commotion. The video got a lot of views and went viral on social media. However, someone pointed out a figure in the glass reflection during the live stream. What could it be? You're hiking in the wilderness, looking for a safe spot to set up camp. All you can hear are leaves and branches cracking under your footsteps. Some squirrels are running up a tree over there. But suddenly, something unexpected happens. You notice something weird in the distance in between the trees. It kind of looks like a concrete structure of some sort. Weird. At this point, you're at least 20 miles deep in the woods, and there are no nearby towns or villages, as far as you know. So you decide to go off the trail with your friends to get a closer look. But as you get nearer, you realize that it's actually a 12-foot tall staircase, and it's leading to nowhere. Hmm, what's it doing there in the middle of literally nowhere? And it doesn't even lead to anything. You put on your Sherlock Holmes cap and investigate. So maybe there used to be an old house or mansion here that collapsed over the years, and the only thing left is this staircase. But weirdly enough, after circling the bizarre structure, you realize there's no trace of any ruins or even foundations. It's like someone just sliced a staircase off their house, cake style, and plopped it here for no reason. Okay. You and your friends aren't really into getting a whole lot closer. Something feels wrong. The longer you look at this weird structure, the more you feel a super creepy presence. Something tells you you should probably leave the area as fast as possible. You can't explain the feeling or take your eyes off the creepy staircase. You take out your phone and snap some pictures. Then, after a lot of hesitation, you take a few steps closer and notice that the stairs don't seem to be all that ancient, a few decades old at best. There's moss growing out from some cracks. Your friends have had enough. They ditch you and run back off to the trail, leaving you alone on the staircase. You put your foot carefully on the first step. Wham! Adrenaline rush. As you ascend to the top, someone touches your shoulder. You jump and turn around. All you see is black. As weird as this sounds, discoveries of random staircases illogically found in the woods are surprisingly common. Some are made of wood, others are bricks or stones. Some look ancient, while others look like they were finished yesterday. The one thing they all have in common, they all lead to absolutely nowhere, and they're all found in super mysterious locations. One of the most famous ones is in Chesterfield, New Hampshire. A long, medieval-looking staircase made of stones with Roman arches in the middle of the woods. It's believed to have been part of Madame Antoinette Sherry's castle. She was a big singer back in Paris. The castle dates back about 100 years, and it was later discovered again in 1962. This time, there was nothing but a staircase. Another mysterious ancient staircase dates back to 9,000 years ago. It's in a forest in Italy. It looks like a series of stairs that led to a tiny platform at the top. Why go through all the trouble of building the thing if it leads to nowhere? Well, some experts think it could have been some sort of ritual tower, but your guess is as good as theirs. 
Some of the more modern staircases found in the woods also have an added bonus. They come with their own urban legends. Gee, would that be a two-story or three-story staircase? (laughs) One of the most popular stories comes from the Philippines, where a forest ranger called Torquic allegedly went out on one of his routine patrols to look for missing people deep in the local jungle. That's where he claims he found some seriously out-of-place stone staircases. They even had weird markings on them. To get a better look at what was around him, he decided to climb up one of them. Just then, he was approached by a vicious stray dog that forced him further up the stairs. A few hours later, he came back to the village. Only thing was, he had been missing for five years. Was that staircase a time-traveling portal? Hmm. Another account allegedly dates back to the 1940s, around the time of the Roswell UFO mystery. A man who claimed to be a scientist was sent to assist in investigating one of the many animal-related cases that kept popping up. Little did he know, this one to two week investigation would end up lasting six months. His team encountered a random wooden staircase in the woods that seemed to emit some type of frequency. They camped around 100 feet from it that night, but the next morning, it vanished. All that was left was a black burn mark where the staircase was. Two days later, it reappeared out of nowhere, 160 feet from its original location. The team wanted to get a sample of the wood to send it off to the lab. There was one problem. No matter how hard they tried, it was impossible to chip off a piece. The wood from the staircase was apparently indestructible. These weird mystery stairs have been around since ancient Cambodia. Right in the middle of the jungle is an abandoned 2,000-foot-long staircase leading to, yup, nowhere. According to experts, this staircase was built about a thousand years ago. They don't know for sure, but they think it led to an ancient city. Sadly, over the years, that city is now completely covered by the dense jungle. Maybe it was an important meeting spot for travelers and merchants coming from all over the continent. Well, back to your story you feel a strange presence behind you. You turn around, probably one of your friends snuck up on you or something. But then, you realize there was no one behind you. You're the only one around. You freak out. Something is definitely wrong here. So you rush down the stairs and bolt back to your friends, panting and startled. You start to tell your friends what happened, but they don't believe you. They think you're just trying to scare them even more. But the emotion on your face, it looks legit. There's real panic in your eyes, the kind you just can't fake. Shadow or wind or whatever that thing was, your fear's real. You all agree that you should stay away from the stairs, and it's probably best if you go back home. Right now. I guess camping out there overnight just wasn't meant to be. As soon as you get home, you open your phone and check out your gallery. But no. You scroll through photo after photo. The staircase! It isn't there! None of the pictures have any staircases in them. Just a small, flat clearing with nothing but trees around. No weird shadows. Nothing. Your friends have the same experience. Your eye twitches and you look over your left shoulder. You're in the safety of your own home, but you suddenly feel the same presence you felt on that staircase. Oh no! Everything goes black. But you can relax, most of these stories are just urban legends, told to give you the heebie-jeebies. The internet has a way of spreading rumors faster than the speed of light. Most of these stairs might have even been built on purpose just recently. One weekend woodshop project, a couple of photos, and you too could be a sensation on every urban legend website. Then you just tear it down, take a photo to show it magically disappeared, and just like that, you're an internet superstar. But let's say you find some real stairs on your weekend camping trip. They're most likely the remnants from an old house or a cabin that got demolished or just collapsed after it was abandoned. Hey, it's 2021. There's a logical explanation for just about everything these days. That presence you felt was most likely your own mind playing tricks on you. When you see something in real life that looks like something you saw on a website or a scary movie, your mind starts to work overtime. 
and you can actually see something or feel something that's not even there. That's what some people say happens when you get hypnotized. You want to see something so bad, and you do. That's probably what happened. Or was it? The SCP Foundation is a secret organization that has one goal – to secure, contain, and protect the world from bizarre creatures and objects. The secret bases of this organization are hidden all over the world, and each of them contains scary, dangerous, harmless, miraculous, and simply crazy objects. And now, you'll see some of the weirdest. Object SCP-410 this is a colony of 14 individual beetles, similar to scarabaeus of different colors, from light blue to dark emerald. At first glance, they look like ordinary insects. But soon, you notice that these bugs don't feed on leaves, larvae, and other food. They eat mistakes in a text. What? Put a paper with some text containing spelling or grammar mistakes and syntactic errors inside the terrarium with object SCP-410. The bugs run up to misspelled words or punctuation errors and eat them. 20 minutes later, the beetles secrete corrected letters or words from their bodies. This way, they completely edit the text. One member of SCP-410 can eat about 25,000 errors per day. The beetles can live without incorrect texts for about two days. Then they fall into a state of hibernation. To revive them, you need to put a text containing at least 50 errors next to them. Object SCP-2157 is a mysterious 200-square-foot piece of land found in a forest in Japan. People are standing in different poses on this territory. 20 men and 21 women. They're all of different weights and heights. Their feet are on the ground, and their faces are turned to the west. People react to external stimuli. They blink, flinch, and get scared. And still, they're standing there, motionless like trees. They start screaming if somebody tries to lift them off the ground. But soil analysis has shown that SCP-2157 objects have no physical connection to the land. Their feet are in no way connected to the soil. A body scan has shown some earth inside their stomach. As soon as an SCP Foundation employee enters their territory, the people turn their heads in their direction and just stare at them. As soon as the outsider leaves, the people start looking to the west again. Monitoring of this object continues. Object SCP-621. It's hypnotic tulips. They look like ordinary tulips, but have bioluminescence. They get energy and other nutrients from the water and glow purple, blue, or green. This glow has a hypnotic effect on people and all nearby living beings. Bees, for example, start pollinating only these flowers, ignoring all other plants, which speeds up the reproduction of the tulips. Herbivores and other natural enemies avoid SCP-621. All this makes tulips a rapidly spreading species. While growing, SCP-621 takes all the nutrients from other plants growing nearby. It depletes the soil and consumes a lot of water. Under the influence of SCP-621, a person tends to take care of the plants and do everything to make them live as long as possible. For example, owners of large fields only take care of the tulips and ignore the rest of their farmlands under the influence of the glow. Oh God. Oh God. Thus, tulips can spread until they capture all territories, and people will treat them with love because of their hypnotic effect. Hmm. Therefore, it's crucial to keep tulips in an isolated greenhouse. Employees of the SCP Foundation water them every day and don't allow them to get out of the area. Object SCP-2559-J While conducting research in one of the laboratories, a scientist accidentally opened a portal to another dimension. Little kittens began to come out of this portal in an endless stream. There's an infinitely huge world of kittens on the other side. If you pick up one of them, it will turn out to be an ordinary little kitty. The portal is located deep underground. It's not yet known how to close it. 
As a person approaches the doorway, they find themselves under the influence of cute kittens. Aww. Now, they're falling out into our reality at a rate of three kittens per second. SCP-999 is a large moving mass of transparent orange slime. It looks like jelly and has the viscosity of peanut butter. The shape and size of the creature are constantly changing. The object's surface is covered with a thin, flexible membrane that prevents the mass from spreading in different directions. It's a friendly creature that likes to play with people. So cute. It jumps on a person, hugs them, and makes gurgling sounds. SCP-999 emits a pleasant and constantly changing odor. It can be the smell of bacon, or fresh bedding, or roses. Touching SCP-999 causes euphoria that increases with the duration of contact. After that, a person experiences happiness for a long time. The object likes to completely envelop people and tickle them from head to heels. Object SCP-831 is a colony of unknown insects, similar in appearance and properties to ordinary termites. They feed on cellulose and water with sucrose. One termite lives from 25 to 40 days. The colony should remain in an empty bright room under constant supervision. Mm. The walls and floor in the room should be made of high strength steel. Employees should pour water with nutrients on the floor to maintain the life of these termites. You can only enter the room in a protective suit. When the termites get access to any object, they begin to use it to make the most primitive tools. For example, if you put a pencil in a room, termites will extract graphite and use the wooden body to create chips or something else. If you constantly feed it, the colony will grow and multiply. It will use primitive tools to create modern technologies. These termites know the properties of all substances and understand how to use them to create inventions. With the help of knowledge of the laws of physics and chemistry, and using wood and graphite from the pencil, in a few days, termites can create a primitive steam engine. The longer they stay in some place, and the more they multiply, the more perfect the inventions will be. Oh, yeah. A colony of millions of termites can create high-tech machines or radio transmitters that are incomprehensible to people. The boundaries of inventions are unknown, but the results of their work surpass all human technologies. This is why SCP Foundation employees keep SCP-831 in an enclosed empty room. Object SCP-1689. It's a big bag of potatoes. In stable condition, it weighs about 110 pounds. There are about 200 tubers of ordinary potatoes inside. The inner space of the bag is much larger than it looks from the outside. The size of this area is unknown, but it's completely filled with potatoes. It's impossible to determine where the bag ends. Oh my god! SCP Foundation employees once went on an expedition inside the bag. Scientists created a special paste that broke down starch and turned potatoes into liquid slush. This way, the employees made a tunnel for themselves by spraying the substance and raking potato muck with shovels. That's when they found out that the space had a concrete floor, concrete walls, and a ceiling. They were walking inside some kind of building filled with potatoes. The team punched a hole in the wall and left the construction. The ground was covered with dried grass. There were only potatoes around. What was at the top was unknown, since the entire space was filled with potatoes. They also found a rusty bicycle there. The expedition failed. SCP-1689 leads to a world similar to ours, but something happened there, and it began to fill up with potatoes. Object SCP-623. This is a small room built in the 60s by a professor of biochemistry. There are only these items in the room. One blue sofa, one red sofa, one green sofa, one white plastic chair, one round table decorated in the same colors as the sofas, seven chairs around the round table, and seven multicolored lighting fixtures. All the furniture is nailed to the floor. Strange patterns are painted on the walls. They perfectly match the style and the location of the furniture. 
The acoustics and the appearance of the room, as well as the arrangements of all the objects, have a strong, pleasant effect on a person. Oh, yes. Inside the room, people feel harmony and happiness. They relax and become kind and harmless. Oh. Because of the feeling of peace and serenity, people can't take the furniture out of the room. They just want to dance, laugh, hug the table, lie on the floor, and cry with joy. But as soon as they leave the room, they immediately become angry, aggressive, and sad. The real world outside the room seems to be a dangerous and dark place. If you stay inside the object for more than a few minutes and then go out, you can lose your mind. This may sound mind-boggling, but scientists found a 385 million year old root network. Yeah, it's like a fossilized web of roots that's got them all excited. They're reimagining what the world's first forest might have looked like. And let me tell you, it's not what you'd expect. Under an old highway department quarry near Cairo, New York, they found the remains of a mighty and mature old growth forest. This place was home to at least three of the world's earliest tree-like plants. But these plants, in fact, looked nothing like trees. One of them looked like giant stalks of celery. The second type resembled pine trees with hairy fern-like fronds for leaves. And the third plant was like a palm tree with a bulbous base and fern-like branches. It's like they couldn't decide what they wanted to be when they grew up. But here's the kicker. These primordial trees were quite old and large, so they weren't packed densely together. They were relatively scattered across a floodplain that ebbed and flowed with the seasons. And even though dry periods were a regular part of the cycle, these tree-like plants thrived in semi-arid conditions. Their roots had adapted to the possibility of short-term flooding, which is confusing because they're not supposed to survive in those conditions. But wait, it gets even weirder. Other trees in the area came more prepared for bouts of water scarcity. There were extinct pine tree-like plants with deeper root systems that could spread 36 feet wide and 23 feet deep. These guys were more advanced than the fern-like trees and had true leaves that could photosynthesize. It's like they were showing off or something. So why did the fern-like trees dominate prehistoric deltas while the pine-like trees dominated the floodplains? It's like they didn't even care about setting up near rivers or water sources that could carry their genes farther afield. Maybe they were just rebels without a cause, doing their own thing and not caring what anyone else thought. In any case, this finding has got evolutionary ecologists all excited. They're saying that the earliest trees could colonize a range of environments and weren't limited to wet areas. Who knew trees were so versatile?